I watched Karen Thompson Walker talks about the different types of fears and how one of these fears happened to the men of the whale ship Essex. Um, in 1819, 3,000 miles off the coast of Chile, there was 20 Amer American sailors who watched their ship flood with water after it got hit, or after a whale uh, put a hole in it. Um, as they gathered on three small whale boats, they only had basic navigational equipment and limited food and water. And they were faced with the decision of sailing 1,200 miles to the closest island that was rumored to have cannibalism or 1,500 miles to South America, which would stretch their uh, food supplies and water. Um, as Karen Thompson Walker explains, humans are hardwired to be optimists and that in English, fear is something that can be conquered. But she wants us to take a new, fresh look at fear. Um, she talks about how when we're younger, we have fears of monsters being under a bed, and that as we get older, these go away. Um, but it is no coincidence that the most creative minds don't forget about these types of fears. Uh, fear can be known as unintentional storytelling. Uh, it has the same components, such as character, plots, and imagery. Fear can almost have uh, a vivid picture, like one that you see like in a novel. Um, it can make us focus on the big question, like what will happen next. Uh, it especially makes us think about our futures. Humans are the only things in the world that can do that and think in this way. Um, since we think of our, or since she wants us to think of our fear as a story, she wants us to think of us as readers, too. And she wants us to choose how we read, or how we read our fears can have a big effect on our lives. Uh, some people read into them more closely, while others just dismiss them. And um, they study them, and then they translate them into preparation and take action, just in case their worst fears do come true. Um, it's true, though. Sometimes our worst fears do come true, and that's what makes them extraordinary. We can sometimes almost predict the future, but we can't prepare for all our fears that our imagination comes up with. So we have to decide which ones are worth like looking into and which ones aren't. Uh, the men of the uh, whale ship Essex made the decision to take the longer route to South America. And they, it didn't end up well for all 20 of them. Only half of them survived. And they were out there for two months at sea. Um, and they ran out of food. And they decided, that, or they resorted to their own form of cannibalism before they were picked up by two passing ships. Um, if the men would have looked more closely, they would have avoided, or if they would have sailed to the closest island, they would have avoided this. And um, she talks about how readers have two temperaments, artistic, which is getting caught up in the story, and then scientific, which is the fullness of judgment. And the men of the Essex got caught up in the artistic If they would have taken the time out to read into their fears, they would have realized the more devastating story of starvation. And um, she says that if we all read into our fears, maybe we, maybe we would be less swayed by the vivid ones, and it, like such as serial killers and plane crashes, and look at the more um, slow disasters, such as gradual changes in our climate and the growing plaque in our arteries. So as we reflect on Karen Thompson Walker's speech, we realize that if we read into our fears the right way, they can be an amazing gift to the imagination. They can be, it can be a way of glimpsing into our future, and it can help influence how our future could play out. Properly reading our fears offers wisdom, insight, and a version of the truth.